Hello, hello, and welcome back to my channel, or hello if you are new. I'm Anna Mae, and today I'm gonna to be showing you and talking you through how I take notes in college. So I feel like I should give a little bit of background on this. I'm currently working towards my master's in peace and development. I've just finished my first semester, and it's a 12 month program, so I'll do two semesters and then like a summer semester working on a thesis. Before this, uh, I got a BA in politics and information and social computing, and I didn't take any notes in undergrad, which is really bad, I know. But I turned out fine and I got great grades. I was totally on track, no issues. Uh, it just didn't suit the teaching and learning style of me and what I was, like the lectures I was in and stuff like that. But for doing a master's, I decided to change it. I decided that I was going to be taking notes uh, to ensure that I was doing all of my readings and things like that. So there's a couple ways I kind of taught myself how to do this, why I sh like getting myself into the routine of doing this and my notes are like okay cute looking. Different people have different ways of taking notes or you know in my case for a while not taking notes but I think it's just different for everyone and the more you see other ways or styles of taking notes, the more you might be likely to do it yourself. So this is kind of aimed at a certain learning and teaching style. I know it would differ depending on what you are studying and where you're studying, um, but this is what is working for me right now. So there's a few like basic things I will start off by talking about. Uh, the first one is that I try to keep my notes looking pretty cute. So they're not necessarily Pinterest worthy, although I think I might start posting a couple of pictures on Pinterest, but they're not super artistic or cute or things like that, uh, but they are colorful. And I do try and mix up like title styles and bullet point styles and I do little side note boxes and stuff like that uh, just to keep it more interesting. So the reason I've done that and I think this might work for a lot of people who typically find it hard to take notes is that I find it difficult to plan things in a linear way when it comes to like concepts, ideas, you know things that you're reading from papers which might seem a little strange given that I am a big planner girl and I plan in an hourly format so that's kind of a lot for some people. Uh, and it's very much linear. But I just can't do that when I'm looking at like school stuff. It just doesn't work for me. So having these little side notes and little boxes is really what works the best for me. The colour is honestly just for fun and because I think it makes it more engaging. Uh, I like colours. Really because I want to and it looks cuter. That's all that's about. I also take my notes on grid paper. I don't use lines because again I find it hard to do things in a linear way and I prefer to be able to space things out differently and having it on grid paper just works better for me. So I have like so many scribbles on this paper but I'll just give you an example. Here you go. So I take it on, what do you call this? Just like a pad of paper. Uh, you can't see it because it's getting washed out because of me. Uh, take my word for it, it's grid paper and it has four holes punched in it. I can't remember where I bought this paper uh, but I bought a lot of it at the time. So I had some left over from undergrad from when I kind of attempted to take notes and it didn't really work out. Uh, so I just use that. I've always used it for notes, drawing, you know, stuff like that because I just prefer gridded paper. So then let's get into the actual notes part of it. I didn't think about the whole white and the light thing. But we'll flip it open. Uh, I just have like a sticker, a free sticker I got from college. So this is a four ring binder, I guess you'd call it. Uh, and I actually just keep the paper loose. I don't have any plastic pockets in here. I know a lot of people try and go paperless now, which is really, really great. But for me, it just doesn't work. Uh, I need to have like a physical version so I can highlight it. And so that I can have it physically in front of me instead of scrolling. It's just, I find it much easier. So I don't print off readings or anything like that, but as far as like syllabus, I hate having to go back online and find the syllabus and like check the readings on the, mm -mm. no. What I have done to like start off my system, the first thing I did was I got the syllabus for 
my three classes. So this is for graduate seminar and development. Let me find the other one. And here for my conflict analysis class. So the first thing I did obviously was hole punch them and put them in here. And that was because there's a lot of important information in here about like assessments and stuff like that. Um, but then as I started to take notes, it kind of served a different purpose. So all the readings that we have for each class each week are in here. So for the MA, I decided I was gonna make myself do all of my readings every week because again, in undergrad, they didn't basically ever that like okay sometimes but most of the time no but it's because the lectures had more content whereas now it's so different because you discuss the readings in class a lot of the time so that's why readings are so much more important at least in an MA I would think so you kind of have to have them read and sometimes you have to do a response paper for the class that we don't discuss the readings in so much. You have a response paper. In the other class, we just discuss readings. So that's what guides the lecture instead of like the class being taught by a lecturer, if that makes sense. So here's an example here. So I'll have like week five. Uh, week five was foreign aid. So I have the readings that were suggested. I have them highlighted in pink. And then you can see there's some highlighted up here in green. I don't know how well you can see this. I hope you can see that. But um, Basically what I do is when I have read them, I will go over them in the color highlighter I've chosen for that week. I'll just find one that I can like open. Here's an example of, this is also for my development class, how I take the notes. So I, I'll probably insert some, it's hard to show it here because the white like washes me, well not washes me out, it gets washed out, I disappear into the darkness. So I will put in some kind of like footage over this. I'll kind of show it back here. Basically, I do a cute title in the colors that I'm going to be using with the pen in the highlighter. Obviously this week I chose green. So the readings, once I have them read, will be highlighted in green in the course syllabus. So I can refer back to them and say, McMichael, that's in green. So it just makes it a little bit faster to find it and just keeps things a little bit more organized. And then I just have kind of like, I will always give who has written the paper and then often the title or an abbreviated version of the title up on top and then I take notes on the reading. So it might be questions I have about the reading or just the reading itself, you know, information that's good to know. And then if there are other things I think are important or they're just kind of side facts that I think should be noted, I'll put them in. This is so hard to do. I will put things like this, like this is a quote from Lenin that was talking about imperialism, the high stage of capitalism. So I'll put things like that there because this is critical approaches to development and that was just kind of relevant to one of the readings. Uh, so I take little bullet point notes and that's what I do for every single reading. Some readings will have loads and loads of notes, some won't, uh, but I try and make them dynamic. So I would definitely recommend looking at Pinterest or Instagram maybe. Uh, I definitely use Pinterest more so for notes kind of things, um, but you can see I use like arrows and boxes and stuff like that all the time. This is another example. This is in the development class as well. We were talking about how gender plays a part in development. And as you can see here, you know, arrows using highlighters. I I use, I'll link the highlighters I have down below uh, and then some of them won't be included in that because they're older but that and I just have gel pens from my planner over the years. That's another one. This is how I take notes and I organize things. So I actually keep all of my notes that I take in here. Here's another example. This is for my conflict analysis class. Again, I don't know how well you can see this, but this is about systemic level theories of war. And this was the second lecture we were doing or the second class we were doing on this. These classes are like three hours long. So, so great. Do alliances deter aggression. So, and I have the, the author highlighted here and I, you know, have mini bullet points down lower here and stuff like that. And then I was doing a presentation on when good fences make bad neighbors. Who's it by? I don't know, remember now. That's Ely. So you can see here, I just kind of did almost like a shadow effect and some arrows and stuff like that. And that's really how I do it. So it seems very creative and people are like, ooh, so fancy. But really it's just to keep myself engaged. It's a very basic form of note taking, but it's really nice to have it here physically. And when you remember something that you're like, oh, wasn't that, it's kind of easier to remember the color sometimes as well, uh, if that's something that helps your memory. I do think that physical note taking is better for when you want to refer back to your notes 
I would think. Uh, I find it easier to flick through paper than to flick, like, flip through documents. That's just me personally and that's one of the reasons why I chose to do it like this. So basically like how I actually go about taking the notes, I most of the time I do it in the library which is again new thing for me uh, because I never really did that before but I will go to the library between classes or after class um, because I have kind of a long drive home so if I don't really feel like driving quite yet or if I drive in early because I have something else to do I will just go to the library, pull up the readings on my laptop choose colour, make a nice cute title and just read through and a lot of the time I'll read the whole article but I'll mostly take the notes probably from the abstract and the conclusion and then the side boxes are things that would come up in the middle and sometimes you're reading an article and you don't really get many notes to take from it. That happens to me sometimes. I'm looking at it and I'm like okay cool but I don't really get much out of it and then there's some that you take loads and loads and loads of notes. So I definitely feel like this is a pretty basic note taking system but I also thought it was kind of helpful to share. It's interesting to see this from other people. I think I like to see how other people do it. Some people are very complicated in how they take notes and they like take notes in class and then they rewrite them or something like that. Oh that's something I didn't say. I don't take notes in class really. I have my notes there. I'll have them in front of me if I want to like annotate what I've already written but I, I don't really do that. I just kind of use it to refer back for discussing something and I'm like did I? And I'll be like did that happen? What was the? And I can kind of what I had thought previously when I did the readings I'll be able to refer back to right then and there in a very summarized form. So that is how I take notes for grad school. I hope it was somewhat interesting to you. Maybe it was helpful. Uh, just so you know it's never too late to start you know, a note-taking habit because here I am. And I managed to survive undergrad, so if you don't take notes, I think you're actually okay. I would not get on anybody's case about it, but for a master's program, I think it's really helpful to do this. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to subscribe to my channel. I'm gonna leave a shortcut for subscribing here, and I'll link some of my other previous videos over here that you might be interested in. Uh, you should also follow me on Instagram at anime.yt. I'm definitely more active over there, and I will see you in my next video.